in the army you get um like resettlement days like they, they grant you days that you can use it's like paid i think it's like 21 days that you use to like do courses or like work experience and things like that to transition into what you're going to do and i had to use all them days for like my trial <laughs> so if it didn't work out like i don't know what i'd have done like you had no idea no i had what? no idea like so i just thought all eggs in one basket yeah, i have yeah. to do this yeah Tom, all good? All good, mate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good. Nice to have you here. So to get us up and running, mate, how does opportunity link into modern day football? Rephrase the question. <laughs> what do you want to know? How, how, how I went about getting my opportunity. How important do you think opportunity is in, in the game? It's oh, massive. Obviously, not everyone gets the opportunity to play um like obviously the level of football that I play um, you know it's sort of I think luck comes into it as well um, with how it come about me getting my opportunity but then obviously it's, it's having the right mindset to take it as well totally, totally yeah um, when did you first start to think about playing professionally obviously your life had taken a different path yeah when was the, did the thought process start to begin Obviously, like, as a kid, I wanted to be a pro anyway, like like everyone does, but then it didn't work out and then sort of sacked football off, like put it, put it, put it to one side, thought, right, I'm going to concentrate on the army. And then I started playing for like Farnborough in the league with A-in at the time, Ryman Prem, I think it was. Started playing quite well getting like a bit of interest from like national league teams and stuff and then end up going away with the army again and i was just thinking like it's ruining like my chance of like playing full time signed for hayes and yedin and then it sort of come about again and that's when i was like i started playing well i was skipper and things like that and i thought i could i could maybe play like a higher level but it was sort of the army holding me back because because of work you had that opinion of your of yourself during the time, like you, yeah. you felt good in that moment. Yeah, yeah. Like obviously playing at that level, I felt like it was easy. Like and I knew that I could play higher. But the only reason I couldn't was because of work commitments. But then I didn't really get presented that opportunity to play higher at the time. Like because I would play like three games and then go away and then play like another two, go away and it was like sort of getting in the way. So then I just made a decision to sign off the army and like, like gamble really at the start of, what year did I sign for Rovers? 17? Yes. At the start of 2017, I signed, signed off the army because you have to give a year's notice. And I thought, right, it'll sort of be, if, if you have a job lined up, they let you go after six months. And I thought, start of the year, it'll be sort of summer then. I can maybe get a club like pre-season. So that was, was a gamble, a complete that gamble. Was, something yeah. that was interested in finding out was whether or not you had to find the club to leave your army role or yeah. you left and gambled it all just thought yeah this yeah is what I wanted so to. i left and i basically in the army you get um like resettlement days like they, they grant you days that you can use it's like paid i think it's like 21 days that you use to like do courses or like work experience and things like that to transition into what you're going to do and i had to use all them days for like my trial <laughs> So if it didn't work out, like, I don't know what I'd have done. Like, you had no idea. No, I had what? no idea. Like, so I just thought. All I've, eggs I've, in one basket. Yeah, like, I have yeah, to do this. Yeah. So Did I think you, that's why I went there with a the mindset. Like, I can't, I can't fail. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know how difficult it was going to be? Yeah, I prepared myself. Look, my mindset was, I might not be the best footballer, but I know that I need to stand out in some way. And I thought, fitness like leading up to I, I found out about the trial like two weeks or three weeks before and like i had a pt in the army who was a good mate of mine and i told him and he, we were doing like yo-yo tests everything like 
every day. I, I was basically like two three, or three season, weeks leading up, two or three weeks leading up to it, like just me and him. He was beasting me. Yeah. Um. So I went in to the trial feel because everyone hates pre season, don't they? Like, I mean, but that was the fittest I've been in a pre season. Um. And I mean, I don't know if you remember, I wasn't like the fittest, but I was, I was up there. And I think that sort of put me into Daryl Clark's sort of mindset. Like, oh, he's a fit lad, like. And I remember my first training, my first, my first day there, and we did a kickball session. <laughs> I was awful. Like it was like a little, little. I think you know the little box. And I was so like the the pace was so quick that like, I couldn't I couldn't get to grips with it. And I remember him walking off, like put his arm around me. He goes, "Don't worry, that's not your thing, that is it." And I just thought. <laughs> I like it. you know you know if you're on trial have you ever been on been on I have trial? been yeah, yeah. I've been on trial yeah you think about all the bad things that you've done that day you say you go out you're driving driving home after training you don't think about the good things that you've done you think about like the bad stuff and it like haunts you you're like oh fuck, like that, that pass I did like but you don't want to get judged in that moment as the manager yeah. thinks that I can't do that yeah and you think within yourself you think but I can I just I didn't show it in that moment <laughs> yeah yeah like it's just obviously the speed's a lot different isn't it so it's just getting obviously the next day I was a bit better and better and then I was used to it um, and I felt good let's um, let's strip it back a little bit because there's going to be a lot of people watching this uh, and we've spoken a little bit beforehand about opportunity being obviously the main theme of, of what we're talking about and people knowing how to create an opportunity so you're playing at, uh, at Hayes and Yedding. You're doing quite well, personally. Mm. You feel like you're capable of playing higher. What immediate steps did you take within those that, that time to move on? So I just went off my own back and forth. Like obviously, we got sent um, full clips of the games. And I just... I downloaded like some app on, on my laptop and got all the clips and... and clipped them all into one video. It was like 13 minutes long or something. I um, can't remember who I sent it to. I think I sent it to um, the UK Armed Forces manager at the time. And he he was mates with Danny Coles or mates with a friend of Danny Coles. Um, and he sent it to him and then he sent it to Colsey. I think he then sent it to Daryl Clark because I think they were so looking for a centre this there. point, You've had no real feedback from anybody else. No. Say, no. Saying to I think I put it on YouTube and people were just like, you know, liking it and things like that. But but this was I all, didn't expect anything to really come of it. It was all off your own back. All off my own back, yeah. I made the video myself, yeah. It sounds a bit but it it helps, do you know what I mean? And so and Danny Cole's obviously to we know him, but he's yeah. he's an agent. Yeah, Have he's an had, agent, yeah. Had you had any exposure to, to agents before that? moment a couple of like you know like the the sort of non people look around like non-league and things like that but I, I wasn't signed with anyone what was your opinion during that time of what an agent's role was for for like a footballer's career well just to put them out there and, and sort of speak to managers and things like that but obviously the, the being a good agent's having contacts in it so you know there's a lot of agents in football like non-league and stuff going oh yeah I'll get you a club and but they don't actually know anyone within the pro game to be able to get you the club. So obviously finding out that this agent, particular agent was an ex-player and that he can get me a, a trial. I didn't even know who it was going to be with. Like I just had a phone call from that UK. I didn't even speak to the agent myself. It was from the UK Armed Forces manager, Nick. And he just rung me, he goes, oh, I got a trial with Bristol Rovers like, in two weeks. Had you any understanding of, of, what Danny Coles' role was going to be for you? No. So nah. you, you weren't aware of what clubs he was trying to get in contact with? No, nah, because apparently, um, obviously this was after I'd signed for Rovers, I found out that if it didn't work out at Rovers, they were going to send me on trial to Gillingham. Right. So, so he must have had, yeah. So there was possible at that time, there was options, yeah, but yeah. you didn't know that? No, I didn't know that, no. no. So when you get the news, you get the feedback, You've spoken to the arms uh, forces manager. You've spoken to obviously this agent. Calls you almost immediately. Says you've got a trial at Bristol Rovers. Yeah. What emotions are you going through in, in that moment? I'm thinking that 
nerves really straight away i'm like wow like and then i'm like it's pre-season i hate pre-season like because i know it's just going to be running and they're professional athletes so i need to get fit it was almost immediately i was like i rung my mate i was like you need to you need to help me out here mate up until that point what had you been how had you been training i've been doing this obviously in the army you have to keep fit anyway um but like, i think i've just been to the Ascension Islands, where I hadn't even played football for ages. Um, and obviously the season had finished anyway, so I hadn't really kicked a ball for a while. And I was thinking, wow, like, I need to do ball work, I need to get fit. Like, and I was panicking, thinking I've only got a couple of weeks. So you were moving into, obviously going on trial to a professional in- environment. Yeah. You knew within yourself you had the capability of playing to that level, yeah. but you hadn't prepared up to that moment. No. Probably how you would have wanted to. How I to. wanted to, yeah. Yeah. So what the, what was that two or three weeks like? Yeah, it was tough. Like my mate Neil Riley, I love that I've shouted him out as well. He's a real good PT in the army. Like he makes things fun as well in the army. Like all the lads love him. But like he was doing yo yo tests, we were doing like lamppost runs and but he would do it all with me. He wouldn't make me do it on my own. He'd do it all with me, he's a machine. Um so and then obviously we'd have the little 4G pitch, like the little cage thing near where, where our uh, block was, where we lived. And we'd just be like pinging balls and that to each other, just getting the touch going. Um, he helped me loads, like getting getting prepared for that. And then obviously I went there fe- feeling quite confident with the runs. Because I know that some footballers, even though professionals, like they go on holiday for the whole summer. Some of them do nothing and then come back. So I was sort of, I don't know, like top top sort of four fitness wise it it depends what sort of run it was if it was like a longer distance one it's not really my thing but like the short the short like interval running and things like that, i've done a lot of that Aaron. so i felt good what was your perception before you went into bristol rovers about what a professional footballer looked like like what a professional football environment was was um i tried not to think about it too much because i I knew basically I had trials and that when I was a kid and I always let like my own thoughts sort of, um, you know, or, or other people's opinions like affect my trial, uh, which I think a lot of people probably suffer with as well. So like I thought to myself, like people aren't going to want me here because I'm potentially going in to take someone's position. They're going to make my time difficult. Um, like the, the Rovers lads didn't, but they didn't make it easy either like that no one let's face it no one really talks to the trialists that much today do you know what i mean like i do a bit more now because i've been there but it's just how it goes like no one really like especially if they're in your position you're like i don't want him like signing in. he's going to take my place it's definitely a tough environment to come into as, yeah. as a trialist yeah during that first training session you've just touched on it before about in that box about not feeling like you'd given your best were you aware of the level that you were going to have to raise your game up to? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I was sort of panicking a little bit, thinking um, it, it gets you questioning yourself. Do you know what I mean? But then it's always you, you know, like if you make a bad pass, just make a nice, easy one. Like get yourself in. Incre- I, I started doing like little pass, little bounce passes, just like just to get yourself in credit and it builds the confidence and things like that. And it, as the days went on, I felt more and more confident. Is that the first moment? I mean, you've got to a point where you feel that good about yourself that you're putting yourself out there for, to play professional football. Is that the first moment that you questioned where you're at? Yeah. Like in what way, like question where I'm at, like in terms of, so you felt like before you, Came on trial, you felt like you were at that level. Yeah. But then I was like, am I actually good enough? Did you question that? Yeah. 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 Because, I mean, you had the usual lads, uh, you know, some lads, you give it away and, you know, you get the little uh, lads going, you don't know if they're talking about you and things like that. And it makes you think, like, oh, am I good enough? Like, they don't want me here. And, but I, I was that coming in, I was that focused, like, I just ignored everything that everyone else said and I just cut like I didn't care you know like you know like some people come in and they're afraid to like tackle someone in case like 
the player like hates I didn't really care like I was like I'm not leaving anything here like I I didn't want to regret being like I could have done more to get that get that contract and like obviously I did get it so I was buzzing yeah people are going to be wondering why if you're at this level at this point so you were 25 at this point obviously capable of being a very good footballer why for whatever reason when you were younger it didn't really work out so obviously I know that you were uh, at Southampton for a period of time Bournemouth Portsmouth the, the South Coast teams I know you're from Basingstoke so they're sort of the local professional teams to you Yeah. what happened at, at, during that period why didn't it work out I'm not really sure you know I think there's a number of things I think I was quite late at developing as well um, like my fitness site when I was like 16 weren't fit at all like even with regards to joining the army, you had to pass like a like a PFA, physical fitness assessment, and you had to get it in under like ten thirty, at a mile and a half, which is easy, like now. But at the time, I remember going and doing like a, a trial one with it, and I was like twelve minutes. Now that's unfit, isn't it? You know what I mean, so your you felt like your physical state was physical state was terrible, but like, like yeah, like. I was all right, like with the ball and things like that, but I wasn't fit. I remember at Pompey, when I was 17, they did the the 1K test, you know, the 3 minute 30 one. But they did that in like two groups. So it's 3 minute 30, then you'll have the other group go. So then you have the 3 minutes 30 off, and you do it again. 3 minutes 30, it was three rounds. And I did like one, and I was sick. I couldn't do it again. And I was just like, it's embarrassing. But like that's probably one of the reasons. But also like the confidence, like like I said to you, touched on it there, like where you go in and other people have the effects where like they don't want you there, make you feel like you're not what like the the lads, like they'll be in their little clique and they'll be like Get on him, like and it just made you not want to be there. So like that as well. Um, whereas being that bit older and obviously what I've been through within the army and like built up that sort of resilience and things like that, not to care what people think and stuff like that. Like, I feel like it helped me, like being in the army helped me to be like the, the sort of character and have that sort of mental toughness that, I, that I've got now. So that rejection that you felt at that age of not being signed, not being mm. given a deal at that age, helped you in the moments now where you're on trial as a 25 yeah. year old yeah yeah don't don't get me wrong like it doesn't mean like I'm so mentally strong and things like that because last season uh, the, the gaffer getting on me and have a couple of bad games you go on a rap, bad run and then you're out the team and that everyone struggles with it but like because before that when I was at Rovers everything seemed to like just fall into place for me like I was playing well felt ledge on the ball like Everything seemed to be going good for me. I didn't really, I had one or two sort of mistakes and things like that, but I was still learning that sort of level and things like that. Everything, everything seemed good. And then I'd never gone on like a bad run of form. And I went to Swindon and in like my sort of towards the end of my first season there, hit like a bad run of form and, and like my head was going and like the manager was on me. And I sort of, forgot like how to sort of deal with all that and like I found it hard and like it affected everything like everything at home and, and I was going through like a bad a bad thing um but like I sort of just worked on myself do you know what I mean like even just like reading and things like that helped do you know what I mean like you read the, read on the those books and that... stuff like that um to help you sort of deal with all that sort of stuff I think it was what you do have is obviously being able to look back on the journey that you've been on. Mm. I think like I'm at this point because I have made this, like I've done this for myself. Yeah. So that's that's a nice way for you to reflect on. But before we move on, I know that people, there's going to be a lot of people watching this who are 17 years old. Like I myself at 15 was released from Portsmouth and yeah. me and you both know how much of a big club that is when yeah, you're yeah. in that area. They're in the Prem at the time as well, weren't they? Yeah, it was like an enormous club and obviously really important to, to the both of us. For those 17-year-old, 16-year-old, 15-year-old boys who are being released, being rejected at that level, but still have aspirations to play professionally, what sort of advice have, have you got for them? 
off the back of your journey? Well, like it feel at that time when you get released at that, that age, you feel like that's it. It's it's over, don't you? Like you feel like you kind of, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. But it's always good to just sort of not not think too much into it. If you know what I mean, like yeah, you use that as like fuel. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them like I can do it. But if it doesn't happen straight away, like don't give up. Because I mean, although I, 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 I kind of did give up, but not completely. If you know what I mean, I was like, right, it's not worked out for me right now. So I enjoy football. I'll keep playing, but I'm gonna focus on like my career and then football sort of just crept back in and because I, I wasn't caring too much or like letting it affect me too much, I just enjoyed it, it then picked up again, do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, just I know that a lot of lads get released and then they think that their life's over, but it's not. It, it opens up so much more opportunities as well. I mean, you look at um, Tariq, his career's end at 25 and I think he's dealt with that so well. You know what I mean, he speaks really well about it. Yeah, someone who definitely that. That's what I mean. He's like an inspiration, like and and he, it kind of shows that. Yeah, football's our job and everything like that, and everyone wants to do it, but it's not everything. Like there's there's so much more. So during that six years that you've stepped away from football and and are enjoying your time in the army, mm. is the seed of I want to play professional football still in there? Yeah, like. I remember I'd go to the pub with my mates on like a, say like a Saturday, it, like when I wasn't playing football at the time and you'd have like Gillette Soccer Saturday on in there and I'd be having beers and stuff like that. And I'd see people that like I know playing and I'd be sat there with my pint and I'd be like, like putting it down thinking like, what am I doing? Like that could, that could have been me. So, like, it was always there, like, a bit of, like, I was gutted to see it, like, not gutted to see them doing well, but gutted because, like, I wanted to do it. So it was always there. Um, it was just the opportunity never come up. Um, I was never, like, bitter because, um, like, a lot of the players that I played with as a kid didn't, didn't make it either. Um, and even lads that I thought were probably better than me didn't make it. So it was kind of, like, I felt like I'd watch someone or say I'd watch like a League Two game or something like that on telly. Be like, this is rubbish. Like I could play in this. But like, it's very easy to say, isn't it? Like people do it now. Yeah, we're all great from an armchair. Yeah, we? that's what I mean. <laughs> but like, I generally thought like, oh, I can do better than this. Like, what's he doing there? But At what point did you address, you touched on before, that you felt at 17 you weren't fit enough, held you back? Because quite obviously you're capable as a footballer. Mm. At what point did you address that? And at what point did you feel like you were gaining success with your football because of that? Um, well, it's probably the farm, the Farnborough one, really. So I played for I played for a team called Pagham in the Sussex County League um, whilst I was still like joining the army, doing my training and stuff like that. And like football fitness is a lot different. I was I was fit when I come out like of basic training that, and I played a little twenty minutes there, and I was blowing. But um, I knew that I was better than that level, and I'd started playing in the army, like for the army team and stuff like that, which is quite a good level. A lot like some of the lads in there were playing like Conference South and that. I was thinking if he's playing Conference South, like I can play that. You were allowed to play in the yeah, army. Yeah, you were allowed and... to play. Yeah, okay. yeah. Like the army actually like liked it. They 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 do all the stuff like on social media and that now. Like some of the lads play for um, Hungerford, um, like the goalkeeper and one of the defenders there. They're always tweeting about it and stuff like that. They they is, encourage it. They is like there it. a level like there's a cut off like if you play. Yeah, yeah. Because like like with me, they they wouldn't allow me to play like full time, and like play uh, and and be in the army because I excuse me because I they're like it can't get in the way of your work so as long as you can manage your sport around work then they're happy but it got to like 
it's different with rugby though. They have like professional rugby players that like, play internationally, but they play rugby just and they're classed as a soldier as well. But they were trying to sort out that it was going to be the same as that for me so that I could stay in the army and be a footballer. But we couldn't come to like, they couldn't come to like an agreement. It would have been quite cool. Yeah, it would have worked out for but, you, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would have been nice. Like, double pay and that. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, so we're talking about opportunity as a, as a starting theme, obviously, for your career. We haven't really got into, because you've made a decision, like an enormous decision to leave the army before you've mm. had a trial, before you've even spoken to an agent or did the video of yourself to send to clubs. Yeah. How do you come to that decision? How big of, how big of a decision is that? Yeah, it was massive because obviously the army, the army's like a bubble and it's comfortable. Um, you know, you can just, you've got your mates there. Sometimes it feels like it's not even work. Um, but I was getting annoyed with like, not the, not the job. Like, so like if I was on tour, say Afghan or something like that, it was good. Like you had like a purpose, but normal day to day work sometimes they just find things for you to do just to just so that you're not doing nothing and it was like that kind of thing like pissed me off a bit because it would just be like pointless things or you'd sit about all day like in this crew room till like four o'clock and you think oh yeah finish that I'll go gym and stuff like that and then they go right all of you've got to go and do this now and give you a job to do at like four o'clock and it was just like the, the sort of bullshit of it and I was just like I hate this part of it like and obviously the pay the pay's all right but to get to like you know a real decent wage you would have had to be in like 20 25 years and then once you've been in 20 25 years you get you come to the, your, your service is only meant to be 22 years unless they like extend it so once you've been there that you, you finally achieve that pay and then they're like yeah your service is finished like you get a pension, that, but you're still only going to be like, I mean, I would have been like 45, 50 or whatever by the time I'd finish or something like that. Then I'd have to find another job anyway. And I was just like, I don't, and I looked at the job that the, the other soldiers were doing, like the, the rank above me. They were sat in an office and that, and I was like, I don't even want to do that. So I kind of had like a moment where I was like, yeah, football's like, I, I really want to achieve being a professional footballer, but do I really, if, if I'm not going to go out and do that, like, do I really want to stay in the army and have a career in like a full career in the army? No, not really. Cause I didn't really like the look of what, what the ranks above me were doing anyway. So I made a decision to sign off and try and pursue being a footballer. But then I had like in my head, what else can I do? And I was thinking, oh, I could be like a personal trainer or something like that. But really I was kind of like, I don't even want to do that anyway. So I don't know what I would have actually done if the football didn't work out. All or nothing. Yeah, it was kind of all or nothing. But I was saying to the people in the army, oh yeah, I'm going to do this, like personal training and things like that. Because I heard a lot of people going, oh, you'll be back. Like, you know, all the banter, like, oh yeah, you think you're going to be a professional footballer and all that. And they all banter you, like, and then when you actually do it, you're kind of like, yeah. A lot of people oh. talk about when they set goals by saying them out loud, obviously they become a little bit more real. Mm. Did you tell people like, I'm, I'm going to do this or was it, I'm going to try and do this? No. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm like, um, you have your mates who are, who you're playing the same team with. It'd be like, I could do that as well. If you're doing it, I'll do it. And it's like, a lad who always had injuries and that he's like, and we played together and he was decent, but like not as good as what I was. But he was just like, I'd have been a footballer if I didn't get injured. Like, I'd be where you were. Like, <laughs> yeah, he generally believes it. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, yeah, of course you would, mate. <laughs> but no, I generally believed, like, I was so just, like, focused and driven. Like, I remember speaking to one of my mates a while ago when I was struggling, like, as in, in the area we just yeah. spoke about. He was like, I remember when you first signed for Rovers, you were just so focused, like, what's changed? I was like, I don't know, like, and it, it, like that conversation just helped me. Yeah. It just remembering that moment. Remembering like I was like trying to remember the things that I was doing. And like, I just lived football for that, that period. Like yeah. since I found out about that trial, 
absolutely just not didn't think about anything else. I know your opinion of yourself was enough to give you this opportunity to play. What feedback did you have when you were at Bristol Rovers that made you think that you were okay at that level, that I, I belong here? I think it was more from, from the gaffer, really, because I feel like, you know, like lots of people like, like football's about opinions anyway, isn't it? And the fact that, I think if it was a different manager, I think it's just, just the way that Daryl Clark was, like his, his character and things like that, he, he would speak to you. I mean, a lot of managers don't, like they're quiet and then they'll just sort of make the decision, but he'd give me feedback most, most of the time. And I mean, for the first like week or whatever, he didn't, it's sort of cards close to his chest and that, but I think I played a lot of games as well. And you know, when you play a game, you know, if you've played well, um, and I was getting a little feedback from the guy who got me the trial, um, Nick, the, the UK armed forces one, he'd ring me like, how'd your day go and things like that. And he'd speak to his mate who would speak to Colsey, who Colsey would have spoke to the manager. And I'd, it would be like a little chain and it would feed back to me. I don't know if it was meant to, but it was out of it. Yeah, he's quite happy with you. Like, this is the happy. whilst you're on trial. Whilst I'm on trial, yeah. Just keep doing what you're doing. I was like, yeah, all right. Like, but that was nice. Obviously, It was nice to hear yeah. that. Because you, like I said to you earlier, like you go after training you'd think about you, you could have a worldy session but you'd be thinking about that one misplaced pass like and you, it would ruin your whole day it's like my game last night my game last night I don't think you can blame yourself for that last no. night well, chat, right? it, yeah. how different was the professional football environment from what you were used to in terms of training in terms of the level that the other guys were at um, training habits Daily extras, yeah. Just the overall football environment. How different was that to what you were, you were used yeah, to? Yeah, it. I mean, lots of people struggle with a transition from army to like civilian life, but obviously, with me, I'm going sort of. I played football in the army. I was in part of a team and things like that. Going into like professional football, I found it sort of easy because it's that team environment. The banter is similar. Like army banter is a little bit different, a bit more weird. But like, <laughs> like once I was there and signed, and the lads, like I, I, I don't think I could have asked for like a better group of players. Like I still say it now, like it's it's one of the best group of lads that I've sort of been involved with. And like they, they proper. I mean, do you remember that thing when they poured all the water over me? And yeah. I mean, you were heavily involved in a that. Couple of the guys got done with that one. Yeah, yeah. but like. It just makes you f like you feel like accepted, um, but like it's it's different in the sense that I just enjoy you know like when it's in the summer, you just got a pair of shorts on and a t-shirt, just driving into training. I was just like could not wipe the smile off my face, especially when I found out that I'd signed. Like I was almost like in tears. Dri like, what was driving. that moment like? How how did that go? Um, I remember going in the office with Daryl and he sort of sat there with a bit of paper and it's so it's so funny like because he's just like I'm going to take a punt on you and I was like sort of trying to hide the smile and he's like and he'd like write down like the wage that he's going to give me like literally scribbled it down on a bit of paper I'm going to give you this and then if you do well I'm going to give you an, another year on this and he just like slide the bit of paper over and I was just like Okay, <laughs> like, like it wasn't amazing money, but it was like I think it might have even been a. I like, I was on all right money in the army, but then I was also getting uh, cash in at like for, for playing on um Saturday. It was probably similar to them put together, or a bit less. But I didn't care because I was like doing what I've always wanted to do. Um, I remember like when it all sort of got finalised, things like that. And I was in the car, like, and it was proper sunny. And I just sort of had a moment where I was like, Fuck, done it, like. But then I also thought, I keep feeling like you've not done it, like you've not even played a league game, yeah? Yeah. But it was just like so happy, like I was almost like crying. You're signed. Yeah. Incredible moment. How do you go from people are gonna want to know from 
motivated to be signed to change your motivation to get in the team yeah how how difficult was that yeah it was it was hard because i remember um like my first game and like you i remember, started that first game of the season by the way yeah i remember like i knew that i hadn't signed to play but i knew that i'd get an opportunity to play and i just thought i'm at the moment i'm happy to be here so don't care like i'm playing football every day training and like i'm just happy with that and i knew that that they were getting swings back in on loan so i was like well i'm not going to play anyway but then they didn't do the deal in time like so I couldn't play the first game of the season and then i went in like you see your shirt up for the first time and that you're getting all the pictures and stuff and then he named the team and i was starting it's Cholton away first game of the season i mean what what a place to play first like game and i had my mates and that go up and watch as well and I remember they, they got a player sent off in like the first five minutes or something like that. And it just made it, it was that Novak when it got sent off. And it caught, kind of made it a bit of an easy, an easier day. But they scored, didn't they? They, they won 1-0 and it, and it hadn't even got across the line, had it? Well, as far as we're aware, no. Not, not, no. no, the line of the side I, it was. I mean, I played all right. Like, I think I played quite well. And then, you know, you see comments, people going, oh yeah, he's good, like blah, blah, blah. Because I played like nine pre-season games as well. Like, nine or something like that and I play well in every game um, so like my confidence was high anyway I was just like happy to be there confidence was high played my first game I was buzzing done all right like then I was just like right next game like I just concentrated on the next game like everything was just like one step at a time I wasn't thinking about the big picture or anything it was literally like next game next game and then before I knew it, they were like racking up. Um, and like the gaffer could pull me out of the team and I wouldn't care. Like I'd be like, right, that's fine. But then it got to a point where he pulled me out of the team and I was a little bit pissed off because I thought I warranted playing. So How long into that first season did you feel like that moment was? I think it was when... I remember there, there was a game we had at Ro Rochdale at home and we'd won 3-2. I nearly scored like the post or something from a header. And then he pulled me out. I think we had like 12 games left of the season. And he pulled me out. And he was very good at like making you feel good, even though you wasn't in the yeah, team. Yeah, he was. Like I, I remember too many times trying to talk to him about something that I wanted angry. to get off my chest. Yeah. And ended up like walking off saying thank you. And I was <laughs> thinking, like, how has that happened? How has he managed to turn that around? Yeah, you go in thinking... You've got in your head like stats and I've played the last five games and we've won five, something like that. And you go in there thinking of all this you want to say and you come out there actually thinking you were the best player at the club, <laughs> yeah. but you're still not in the team. <laughs> and I was like, you walk out like buzzing and you think, how's he just done that? And you just have to laugh. But I remember him saying, you know, you're 12 games left. You're not going to sit on the bench for these 12 games, blah, blah, blah. And I wasn't in the squad and I was like, what's going on here? And it just sort of got a bit, but then when I think about it, the bigger picture, my first season, and I think I played like 25 and I've not played more games in a season since then. Obviously I've had like injuries and things like that, but probably like my best season, my first, my first one. So I've got, Something that I was interested to ask you, obviously Bristol Rovers fans in particular might be interested in, mm. like, how did you feel after that first season? You've gone from start of the year on trial at, at a League One club off the back of being involved in, in a much lower level. Mm. The end of that season finishes. Like, how do you feel about yourself? I was buzzing. Like, we had Southend last game of the season away. I remember that. I think we won 1-0. I think it was that. Uh, I remember it being like a proper sunny day. Family went up to watch and we finished the season. And like, I was happy with how my season went. Like my first season, we've now got seven, eight weeks off or whatever it is. And I'm not used to that. Like, even with going back to how you said how I felt about the transition, I felt like I was doing something wrong because I had all this spare time. Like with going into training sometimes you finish by like half 12 
I mean, normally I'd be like still in work till like half four or five. Felt like I was doing something wrong, but like I'd finally like adjusted. I knew that I had like seven weeks off or whatever. I had holidays booked. Like I've gone on holidays that I could never imagine going on, like because I've managed to earn enough money to like actually go on them. Like I went to the Maldives and stuff like that. <laughs> like I just proper went all out. And I was just sat there thinking I'd never have been able to do this if like I hadn't like managed to get this get this contract, Bristol Rover, get this opportunity. Quite often people talk about uh surviving and striving. Mm. So you've had a good first season and you obviously feel great about yourself as yeah. you, like as you should have done. How does the mindset change from surviving in terms of like you've been on trial, you're now playing at a level that you're trying to get people to acknowledge that you're a good player yeah. to striving in terms of you now want to be one of the good players in that team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it was difficult for me because obviously I, at the time like, I wanted to stay at Rovers when, when I left. Like I remember it being like Cogs had just took over and where I come from the army and I only had like six months left of my deal, I, I started and I wasn't playing at the time. I started thinking this could all be over for me. Like I'd end up going back in the army or something. Like I don't know. And I was offered a two and a half year deal at Swindon, like, a bit more security. And at the time, like I wanted to take the security and I just kind of wanted like a new deal at Rovers. Like, I basically was asking for a new deal and he was like, I can't give you one. And I was like, well, I'm going to go then. And he was like, all right then, see you later. <laughs> That's how it went. That's how it went, yeah. Whose advice did you go to during those moments? Yeah. Like, who did you look to for, for advice? I was speaking to my brother a lot. Um, I had a mate as well who's been in the game. Um, I mean, he's not an agent, um, but he was advising me as well. Um, like, look, you've just got to do, do what's best for you. Like Swindon were offering me to go there and offering me to play every week no that didn't really happen but at the time you know the, the gaffers ring you up and, and gassing you up going I want you to be skipper blah 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 and I was like for like about 10 games or whatever and then he just changed it up I don't know what I don't really know why I still don't really know why but uh, and that's when I went in that dif difficult period after that because it sort of messed with my head a bit um, and I sort of forgot sort of where I come from and things like that but yeah so it's just I mean, I, I've waffled on it. I don't even know what the, what the original question was there. It was, I mean, when you move to Swindon, you're now, you f must feel mm. like a footballer. Like you, and you've yeah. just touched on there, you've almost forgotten where you've come from. And I don't think that's necessarily, in my opinion, a negative, that no, no. you're now playing at a level that is very good. You've played games and excelled in those games. So you now you know you're capable of playing good football. Yeah, but to strive. It's the, yeah, more. that I'm interested to know how you, how you got, how you changed your attitude from feeling like I'm not playing, but that's okay. Cause I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. to being annoyed that you're not playing because you knew you were good enough to play. Yeah. It's, um, it's a good question to be fair. Cause I, you know what it's like when you're out the team, you end up feeling like you're not good enough. Um, and it's hard to keep that that sort of belief in yourself. Like the more the more get like obviously when I wasn't in the team last season, we were top of the league and we were flying. So can't you can't argue that much. Um, all I thought to myself was I'm good enough. I want to play, but like the gaffer had his team, and I was I knew that I was like right. If I get an opportunity, I've just got to play well. But then even when I played well, I knew that the first opportunity that he had, it would take me back out of the team. That was just how it was. And I sort of come to terms with that. And I just thought, just play whatever game I can, keep playing well. And then I'll, I'll just move some, I'll, I'll try and move somewhere where I, like the gaffer wants me. Because I felt like I wasn't wanted. How difficult was that to deal with? It was difficult. Um, you know, my agent had a lot of phone calls from me, like going like, like effing and blinding, like I'm fuming, like, you know, what have I got to do? Blah, blah, blah. And you know, that's what your agent's there for really as well. Um, 
and it's hard because I remember in training, like the gaffer at the time was like, I would be playing a keep ball. I'd be ledge and like, there'd be people giving it away and that. And I'd give one away it's like, on me. I'm thinking uh, we've had arguments. I'm like, What's your problem, mate? <laughs> like, I don't know what I've got to do. Um, but yeah, so obviously you think to yourself, right. I mean, that, that made me think like, I'm not just happy to be here because I'm not happy. I'm not actually happy to be here. Do you know what I mean? Like I wasn't happy being there when I'm not playing, but like I'd moved on to that club and I sort of put that I'm happy to be here to bed, like with Bristol Rovers, because it was a new manager. He hasn't signed me. Like I don't owe him anything. Like like he hasn't signed me like out of the army. I don't owe him anything. Like I felt like I was just grateful to Daryl for giving me the opportunity. But when I signed for Swindon, it was like a new start. Like I'm a professional footballer. I'm not just ex army. Like I'm here because I'm good enough. And that's that's where the mindset sort of changed. I mean, you had been told by the manager at the time that he wanted you. Yeah, that I must have made you feel like, oh, I have yeah, to, yeah. Have, that's where I want to be. Yeah, that's where I want to be. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, you know, he's a great manager, and he's, um, you know, we won the league, we got promoted, and you know, I only played like nine league games that season. Um, you know, I people thought I was injured, but I wasn't. I wasn't even injured. Like I just wasn't getting in the team. Um, and I'd come in and we'd, I'd play in like a game, like say crew who were like up there with us and we'd win like three, one and I'd play well, but then his main center half would be back and he'd, he'd be back in. Like I wouldn't play again. I, I myself during my career have been involved in teams that have been promoted, but I didn't play similar to you. I didn't play yeah. enough to feel like I probably I'd contributed. Yeah, yeah. The people who think you'd have been absolutely over the moon. Like we've been promoted. I mm. have like, it's, it's reflects amazingly on me. Can you give me an insight into to the mixed emotions you feel during that yeah, moment? Yeah. I still felt like, I still felt like I deserved it because I mean, yeah, I wasn't playing at the time, but the way that I was training and playing, like I was keeping the people like, like the competition and that. Like they knew that they had to play well because otherwise I'd be in because I mean the, the gaffer would use me as an example going he's doing everything right he's training like up here in training blah 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 like it made me feel good and it made me keep doing what I was doing but then I also I played in some really important games like that one I mentioned um, and then I had like a, li a couple of little injuries like so much bad luck with like games being called off as well like are oh, you starting and then the game will get called off that happened about three or four times and then the next week I'm not in a team like I'm not starting so he'd like change it because someone would be back so there's like there's like an extra three or four games where I would have played there's another one where I was meant to start against Plymouth away and that would have been a wicked game to play in and I had like some virus like I was throwing up and I couldn't go I was just like I was my luck. I could have, I probably could have played about 15, 20 to be fair. In your opinion, how different was the Tom Broadbent that went on trial at Bristol Rovers to the Tom Broadbent that is now in a promotion League Two Swindon team? Um, I think, yeah, like as in the Tom Broadbent, I feel like he was actually more dri driven the one who went on trial, like I had where I had in my head, like clear goal of where, what I wanted. But when I was actually in the promotion team, like I almost felt like a little bit of an outsider. You, everyone wants to be that important one, like wanted and things like that. And I didn't really feel that. Um, so, I mean, although I was like more experienced and I knew that I was good enough, whereas at, going on trial I still actually wasn't sure I just I was just like I'm going to give it everything and if it doesn't work out then at least I've tried I was almost like that but I don't know mate it's just 
it, you know what it's like yourself when when things aren't going well you know you start questioning a lot of things don't you and you're like i don't want to be here like people like you can't even have a laugh with the lads as much because you banter someone the They'll be like, all right, mate, you ain't even playing. Like, and like, it just shoots you down straight away. Like, so do you, have you created habits? Have you, like, do you know have training habits? Do you have a routine? Do you have a, like a, a lot of professional footballers obviously work within their sort of what they're used to? Yeah. Do you have that now? Yeah, yeah. Like, I do certain things. Like, I like to eat certain foods, like, before pre match and things like that. Obviously, like, when you go away, that they have certain foods out for you, but I always eat the same meal because um, I just feel like I've done it before and it's worked and I want to keep doing that. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'll always make sure that I... Like, sometimes I still make the mistake now where like, I'll sleep, but I'll sleep too long and then you feel worse. Like, I always make sure that I get between, like, eight and nine hours, not too much or not or not enough like I like to get like a good sleep in like certain things like that where you just think right I've done everything right um I think I think there's that that's really that's it really like I don't do too much I don't like to think to, I used to think about the game too soon and like build it up and be like oh, game tomorrow like I'd be not not being able to sleep because I was thinking about the game you know that feeling that you get I've been guilty of that yeah I've... and then you come the game comes and I'm like knackered like and it actually drains you but recently I mean I've only just come back in the team because I've been out injured recently I mean my first game back I was nervous like so nervous because I haven't played for so long and um I was thinking about the game like the night before in the morning like Bellies in bits, like game comes and I feel like drained and I was knackered like during the game. Like, I done I done well. But then I was like, I'm not gonna think about the game before now. And like I don't even think about the game until like I'm out doing the warm up now. Like because I feel like that nervous some, energy. Like an easier way to easier control way your to anxiety. Control, yeah. 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 I've always struggled with anxiety. Like I'm, I'm been guilty of that. Thursdays, Fridays, just the write off really in terms of focusing on on something. Yeah, putting so much of of your effort into wanting to do well, do well, and then it, and then you're playing a game and whatever happens, and do you think after the game, like good or bad, I yeah. didn't need to waste my energy. No, no, no. Is that something that you wish you could have told yourself? Yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. like especially. You know, when I was going through that bad, that bad phase where, you know, I remember being like social media, like fans like hammering you like, I oh, ain't good enough and that. And I was thinking, I've come from like a League One team into a League Two team and I feel like I'm a, I've just turned into a worse player. Like, I think even now, like, I'm not really the same player as I was at Bristol Rovers. Like, because of, I'm still building that up. Like, I've only played like, I've played four games on the bounce now. I need a good like 10, 15 before you're like fully right I'm on it. So I'm still just taking one game at a time. But I feel like I'm a different player at the minute. Like Bristol Rovers, I used to like get on the ball and want the ball and drive out and try and play. But at the moment, like I don't really do that. I don't really know why that is. But I know that the gaffer doesn't really want that either. So I don't know if that's... But people are like, you ain't good enough to do that. You kind of, it gets in your head and you're like, why not like? Oh, I better just keep it simple and just do that. Whereas at Rovers, the gaffer wanted me. He's like, step in, like, express yourself. And you felt like you had the license to do it. Whereas you go to a different club and they want you to play a different way. So you just do. And then it becomes like part of how you play. How tough is it to, you've had a unique journey mm. and you've gone through loads of different emotions and loads of different levels in terms of at one point you're on trial, one point you're in the team, then you're out of the team. Football is very emotive. It's highs and lows consistently every day. How tough is it in your low moments to remember that you're a good player and that you deserve to be here? It's hard. It is hard, isn't it? I'm sure you, you know that yourself. Like Sometimes you just look back on... I sometimes look back on clips of where I've played well to be like, 
say you are good, like, or, but I always say, like, I remember someone saying it to me, I can't remember who it was, but they're like, never too high, never too low, because the games come round so quick. Like, you play the next, like, say you've had a bad game, and you play the next game, and you do well. Like, that bad game's not completely forgotten about straight away. Like, people, like, you know, fans are fickle, aren't they? Um, like, they'll, they'll instantly be like, he's the best player in the world, like, he scored. Like, that's it. So, so that word that we've used quite a lot, I've actually at the start, obviously when we've been speaking at the start, opportunity. Mm. So important for you, your career kicking off. How important do you think the word opportunity is to you now? Yeah, it's massive. Um, I think everyone, like it's one thing's getting the opportunity, which is quite hard to come by anyway, but then it's, taking the opportunity um i mean because as a footballer you're waiting for an opportunity like every week really especially when you're in the position that i have been found myself in being on the bench or not involved and you're like i just want that opportunity and then like you said like find out you're starting you're like, oh, i've got to take this opportunity but then you don't want to try and do too much to mess it up you just got to do things simple you know what I mean? And then, but like, I remember with like the previous manager, I felt like I had to do something amazing to be able to stay in the team because I just knew that it, it wasn't, I wasn't really in his plan to play. How many different kinds of opportunity are there? That makes sense. So, and by that, I mean, when you're first trying to become a professional footballer, the opportunity that you want is to showcase yourself to yeah. Bristol Rovers. Now the opportunity that you want is to be in the team. Oh yeah. yeah. The next opportunity is to stay in the team. Yeah. Like how within There's one opportunities word opportunities all the time, yeah. How how broad of a word is opportunity? There's sort of no no real limit, is there? Like like we've just said, like so where I'm at now is I've started the last four games. Um I'm, I've got that opportunity where I'm starting at the moment each week. The next opportunity, if I keep playing well, is a, a new contract or a move or something like that. That And the next opportunity is it's endless, really, isn't it? How aware are you that you're so good at dealing with opportunity, if at all? Because I'm not sure that you are. I don't are, think I am, no. But from having this conversation, I'm... Like you've had created so many opportunities for yourself and more often than not taking them. How aware are you that that's something that you've done or do you not give yourself the credit? I don't think I give myself the credit. Um, Cause I think I'm, a, I'm like my own biggest critic, you know, like I said to you with like the trial where I do really well and then I do one bad pass and I would just be thinking about that bad pass. Or like I said to you, like, I played last night, I played really well. But then I give a free kick away and they scored. Like, which cost us like a point. It's, like, you can't do anything about it now. Like, it's it's how you sort of, like, overcome that and, and move on and take the next opportunity that you get. But I don't feel like I've, I've really, like you saying that, I've never really sat down and, and I've took that opportunity. I've took that opportunity. Like, do you wish you did? I'm going to now. <laughs> I'm going to now. Like, just a bit of appreciation for myself. Just being like, wow, you've actually like, I I've so. actually achieved a lot. Like, like yes, yeah, so having spoken to you now for about an hour, mm. we keep talking about each moment. We talk about opportunity as an overriding theme of your career, and you've taken enormous amount of opportunities that you've been yeah. given. But still, when you speak, you, you... I want more. Yeah, you want more. You want to yeah. focus on the things that possibly you haven't done. Do you think that's also why, you're, why you've been successful? Yeah, I think so. Because I'm never like... It's almost like I'm never settling for what I've got. And I'm always like, no, I want more. I want more. Um, 
So like, yeah, I've took that. if I took that opportunity and was like, yeah, I took that opportunity now, like I'm happy. I don't think I'd go on to achieve. Like, say, I've got the opportunity to start the game. Like, I've not started for a while. I've got the opportunity to start a game. I've played well, and then I start the next game. I'm not going to be like, I'm in now. Like, I feel like right. I'm still. I've only played one game. Like, I need to. I need to prove that I can keep this. Keep this. Um, position and make it mine so I'll literally just think about a game at a time and just put, like play your best like give it give it your best amazing advice amazing advice um, we're almost done mate but we're going to get on some quick fire questions we've got eight quick fires for you okay uh, first one is your best moment that moment when I found out that I was signing the contract and I remember that moment that that was in, in the car, where I, in the like, car. It, it yeah. reflect, I actually reflected and I was actually like, wow, it's actually happening. Worst moment? Um, probably being told by the previous manager that I'm not getting a squad number and that I can find a new club because I was injured at the time as well and I was thinking, like, that ain't right. Like, how am I meant to find a new club? Like, being injured. And then, like, when you actually look at that, Speaking about opportunity and that, and obviously he's moved on. I stayed there. I couldn't move. Like I, had, I think I had Barnet or someone wanting to sign me. I could have ended up being being at Barnet, and then I've stayed there because I'm injured, not moved, and then now I'm back in the team in League One. Just waited, and that opportunity's come up and took it again. The worst moment. Turned worst good. moments turned good, but because of opportunity. Yeah. Best player you've played with. Um. I think Billy Bowden's up there. Stuart Sinclair said Billy as well. It's a joke, isn't it? I mean, yeah, incredible player. Yeah. Um, best player you've played against? This one I'll get, yeah. Um, just because of who he is. And it's funny because I didn't even realise he played, but I'm going to say him. Jude Bellingham. Play against him. In Birmingham. Pre season. Yeah. Pre season friendly. Did he stand out in that moment as. Yeah, like. I didn't actually know who he who he was at the time, but he scored like two or three goals in that game, and then someone was like, "Oh, he's only like 16. I was like, "Wow," <laughs> but like I didn't really, and it was only I did, still didn't realise until like a month or two ago when like the lads were in the gym talking about. Oh, do you remember when we played against him? And I was like, "What?" And he was like, "Yeah, you played that game." I was like, "Did I?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, cool. I can tell people I played against him now." <laughs> Uh, your biggest regret? Um, probably not sticking at football. Like I joining the army soon, but not like not sticking to football and maybe getting into the pro game earlier. But I also don't think that that opportunity would have come about if I if I didn't join the army. So it's not. Massive regret. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not, not having that mindset of like what I had when I went on trial at Bristol Rovers. Like having that mindset while I was younger, but you can't really change that, can you? No, it's it, really yeah, know. easy in hindsight to yeah, say yeah, that you yeah. wish you had I that. I just do that when I was younger. But yeah. Have you enjoyed your career? Yeah, I mean playing football for a living every day it's it's a dream isn't it um, obviously there's been ups and downs and you always look at it and think oh like I wish I played more and things like that but you know hindsight's a wonderful thing isn't it best atmosphere you've played in um, I remember a win when we were at home um be Bradford 3-1 remember that game did you score yeah how mad was that got a header like I, I remember running I remember scored running it. to the I scored the, from um, a corner and it yeah. was like the biggest bobbler ever and I celebrated as if it was like a 30 yard screamer but you remember running towards that um, batch's end like obviously because I it wasn't for your goal but I think it was for Thing. Ellis scored and Cirque scored as well. Yeah, it was Cirque's goal. And obviously I was at the back and everyone had run to that corner. 
And as I was running, like, it was like, the sound was like bouncing in my ears. It was like that loud. And it was just unreal. That was probably the best. To be fair, most home games were pretty special, man, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Last one, mate. What piece of advice would you give an 18-year-old Tom Broadbent? Um, a very good question. Saved it till last. Yeah. Don't let what other other people's opinions affect like your your opinion of yourself. I think because football's a football is a matter of opinions. One manager might hate you, but another one might love you. Or like a fan might think you're rubbish and another fan might think you're amazing. But like don't really listen too much to them. Obviously a manager's opinion matters at the time of the club that you're at. But like, I feel like don't think too deep into what people say about how you play or anything like that. As long as you stay strong in your own head, like then you'll you'll do all right. It's funny that you've said that because the whole reason why you've had some sort of professional football career is because you believed in yourself, mm. created a video off your own back, <laughs> sent it to people off your own back because yeah. you thought that you were were a good footballer. So mm. that eighteen so, I, I've been don't get me wrong, like I've been guilty of been guilty of like forgetting you know what I mean? Like forgetting that I've been able that to self -belief. Yeah, that self belief. Like I've had times where I've been down like and I'm fit I'm like questioning myself. I remember even having a phone call with my brother driving home one one day from training. I was like, I, think I might knock it on the head, mate. I was like, I've had enough. Like I've got I've got to that that point. And he was like, just stick at it for a bit. And then I think that was only like a few weeks before. I think it was after like I had an injury and then another injury from that injury and then another injury from that injury. And it was just like a knock on and then coming back and then the manager not being happy that you're not fit and things like that. And I was just like, you know, I might knock it on the head, mate. Like, And it was like a few weeks before we played Oxford and then I ended up going on and up front and like turning the game around. And then he's like, do you remember that conversation we had like three weeks ago? And I was like, no, mad. But that's how quickly things can change in football. Yeah. Listen, Tom, appreciate it, mate. That was brilliant. So much insightful stuff. If people watching, listening to this can't take anything from that, then I'm not sure they will be able to take anything from, from anything they listen to. But thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, mate. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode with Tom Broadbent as much as I did and have some lessons and takeaways to put into your game and try at training tomorrow. Remember to subscribe, like and review this show via your podcast channel and press the bell button so you never miss a release if you're watching us on YouTube. Head to the ePerform website for even more football-specific information and subscribe to our mailing list to get all the best actionable advice straight to your inbox for free. I'm Joe Partington. See you soon.